Today we're going to have a look at the anatomy, branches and relations of the axillary artery. The axillary artery is the continuation of the subclavian artery. The delineation between the two is made at the lateral border of the first rib. From there, the axillary artery continues on into the armpit, or the axilla, to provide the upper limb with its arterial blood supply. We tend to separate the axillary artery into three separate parts or segments, based on each segment's relationship to the pectoralis minor muscle. We have a segment that's proximal, one posterior and one distal. The termination of the axillary artery is at the lower border of the teres major muscle, at which point it becomes known as the brachial artery. An interesting point of note about the axillary artery is its relation to the brachial plexus. Indeed, the posterior cord of the brachial plexus is named for its relationship to the axillary artery. In this video, we'll be talking about the branches of the axillary artery. There are six of them in total. Before delving into the anatomical relationships of the artery. I like to remember the branches of the axillary artery with the mnemonic SALSAP. Again, a nice, short and sweet mnemonic. We begin with the superior thoracic artery, which, along with each of the first three branches of the axillary artery, supplies part of the pectoralis major and minor muscles. The superior thoracic also supplies the intercostal muscles, as well as subclavius. We then have A4 a chromiothoracic artery, which tends to be referred to as the thoracoacromial artery, but for the purpose of this mnemonic, we're going to call it the acromiothoracic. It also supplies the deltoid muscle as it branches out laterally here. Then we have the lateral thoracic artery, which, which again also contributes to pectoralis major and minor's arterial supply, and then supplies serratus anterior subscapularis, and the tissue of the female breast. So that's S-A-L. Then we have S again for subscapular artery. Let's move around posteriorly to map out the course of that branch. Here it is here. It extends to branch across the lateral border of the scapula, contributing to the scapular anastomosis, and another of its branches supplies the latissimus dorsi muscle. Lastly, A and P, we have the anterior and posterior humeral circumflex arteries, which together form this fairly spectacular ring around the surgical neck of the humerus. They, of course, supply the head of the humerus with arterial blood, as well as the glenohumeral joint, and the posterior humeral circumflex is also said to supply the deltoid and the triceps brachii. Okay, so that's it for the branches of the axillary artery, sal sap. Remember that one. Now let's move on to the anatomical relations. We'll briefly go through the muscles that we discussed, the muscles supplied by the branches of the axillary artery. As you'll remember, the first three branches contribute to the supply of the pec major and pec minor muscles. The acromiothoracic also contributes to the supply of the deltoid here, the core muscle of the external shoulder. The lateral thoracic also supplies serratus anterior here, the subscapularis muscle, and the tissue of the female breast. The subscapular artery again contributes to the uh, scapular anastomosis and supplies the latissimus dorsi muscle. And then lastly, the posterior humeral circumflex also contributes to the supply of the deltoid as well as that of the, del uh, that of the triceps brachii. Moving over to the left-hand side of our model, we've, we've rendered all of these muscles transparent so that we can observe the path of the axillary artery underneath them. And we can map, as we do so, the more intimate relations of the artery. We have the axillary vein, which joins it as it passes into the axilla. We have that posterior cord of the brachial plexus in there. We have the subscapularis abutting the artery laterally and the serratus anterior doing so medially. As we've discussed, this space is referred to as the axilla, and it's a 
the, the space of the accelerant, its boundaries, its borders tend to be a pretty common question coming up on anatomy exams. There's another video on that if you'd like to go and seek that one out. Now, one more interesting thing before we wrap up. The axillary artery, despite supplying all of the upper limb with its arterial blood, can actually be clamped for the purpose of surgery without endangering the, the, the survival of the limb. We can clamp it only at a specific location, which is just proximal to the origin of the subscapula artery, which if we move around the back here, we can see that departing just there. So just proximal to the departure point of the subscapular artery and distal to the thyrocervical trunk because the subscapular itself supplies enough redundant circulation into the upper limb that the limb will survive without the passage of arterial blood through this major conduit. And that's it for the anatomy of the axillary artery. I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you in the next video.